How am I supposed to read any other fantasy after this? Hmm? I have not been this ruined since Sirius Black died. Okay. I'm going to try to divide this review up into spoiler free and spoiler. This book, I have not been so attached to characters in a very, very, very long time. The narrator, whose name I believe is Steve West, oh my god. And I'm so glad that this is the first Lainey Taylor book I've read, read. I've read because if her other books are anything like this and this was the last thing of hers that I've read that ended with a to be continued, i just, I'd die. I would die. Now that I've taken a minute and gotten my life together, let's just go down the list. This book is about... Laszlo Strange who is an orphan or a foundling and was raised by monks. Now Laszlo since the moment you know he basically could walk and talk he's just always been his head in the cloud kind of a kid. He um one of the things that like when I read this and I knew I was gonna need to put it down when I have more time is like that first real scene where we get to see Laszlo and he's playing in this orchard in the orphanage and like his imagination is just so vivid and it's just really amazing to read and even though he knows he's gonna get in trouble like at one point I think he says yeah there's a hook with my name on it or a switch or a paddle or whatever he's like eh, it doesn't matter you know it's worth it and I love that about him so much like that that is this book like resonated with me even then because I was like most readers are like that kind of a child where I'd much rather get lost in this world than be doing something out here in this one. So immediately like that. Huh. World building. Th this book is everything that I desire in an immersive fantasy world. Like they had their own ver their own language, their own vernacular, their own customs and greetings and traditions and like landscapes and the rivers were named and it didn't just say shit like they went to the river or to the mountains and I just really really appreciate that kind of attention to detail in world building in a fantasy book. So that was perfect. I loved it. As far as the plot goes, so we start this book where there's this basically this mystery, this mysterious fantastical city. Um, Laszlo is told about the city through these monks at this monastery or whatever it is that he's raised in and all of a sudden as he's playing he's getting ready to you know he's pretending to be like this knight this warrior and he's getting ready to scream the name of the city and all that will come out is weep. All of a sudden the name of the city is gone from his memory and everyone else's so he spends like the course of his life researching and researching and researching and just obsessed with the city and trying to find the real name and just learning the ins and outs of it because one day he wants to get there. I will say that it is a very beautifully written book without having all that stupid flowery prose that when you really look at it, it doesn't make any fucking sense. It, it's not like that. It, it doesn't have all these ridiculous crazy ass metaphors that just reach like it's like even the back of the book it says it was impossible of course but when did that ever stop any dreamer from dreaming. It's like that kind of just pretty wording without it being just when you really look at it and you're like what the fuck does that even mean like we don't have that issue with this book so that is all i can say for that i am sorry i know the non-spoiler reviews for this book are not helpful at all but you can't it's the summary of this book is written this way for a reason like you can't go into the book and know anything it's, it's you can't so i'm sorry if you have not read the book i need you to read it and then come back and watch the rest of this video thank you bye Mwah. come back okay now my ladies and gents who have read this book. I, this book ruined me. It
broke me. Like, I was listening to the audiobook at work last night, and I finished it. I was just like, no, no, where's the rest of it? Like I said, I got very attached to Laszlo, and when Fuckface Thion Nero requisitioned his books, I got so pissed. So pissed. Like that. You bastard! Oh my god. Like, yeah. And I just, I loved every second of this book. I had no idea basically where anything in this book was going the entire time. Like, Everything was such a shocker, except for when he turned blue, because I was waiting for it. So I was like, that's about fucking time. Like, even when he started to touch stuff, and his hand touched, like, the mesanthium, what the fuck is ever it's called. When he started to touch it, and his hand just turned, like, gray, I'm like, just turn blue already. Now, yeah, there were some things that were kind of predictable for me, I felt like. Or maybe not predictable, maybe it was foreshadowing. I don't know. But, whichever way you want to word it, the fact that, you know, when Lazlo was a child and the monk was telling him, yeah, you were a weird colored gray, and this is after the prologue where we had learned about the first blue chick, and, I don't know, would you call that foreshadowing, or would you call that just easy predictability? Uh, because immediately when I read that, I was like, okay, so he's going to turn blue at some point. I was just waiting for it. I, I was waiting for it. Like, at one point, I thought, I didn't know that was Sarai, and I thought, well, maybe that was his mother. I don't know. But my thing with that, though, is that predictability is not necessarily a book killer for me because it is all about execution. It can be predictable as long as it's written well. This heifer can rewrite the dictionary, and I, I'm at this point, I'm there for it. Okay, I'm here for it. It's just, it's just something about the execution. Predictability does not bother me that much. And really, you know what? No, you can't even call it predictability because what else in the book did you see coming? That There wasn't even a fucking synopsis basically for this book. So you really can't say the rest of it is predictable. It's just certain aspects of it. Like when they kept finding or kept trying to find someone who had the ability to manipulate the mesanthium or whatever the hell it's called. I figured it was going to be Laszlo. I mean, I just guessed. Uh, it, I wasn't 100% sure. But other than that, I had no idea what the hell was going on in this story. Like, I really didn't foresee um, the Tizer Cain coming to the library. And I didn't think Laszlo was going to get to go with them. I thought he was going to have to find some other way to do it. But other than that, like, the whole, overall, the arc of the book, I had no idea where the fuck it was going even finding out the citadel was in the sky i was like whoa cool and then stupid fucking dane dave days what the fuck was his name drave set that fuse blew the anchor and when the citadel tilted Like, I swallowed my own heart, okay? Like, my heart was in my throat. The, the anxiety and the fucking tension that I felt at that time, like, everything else, I didn't give a shit about. Because when they just said one of them fell, I was like, fuck, please, God, don't let it be Sarai. Let it be Minnie. Why couldn't Minnie's ass fall? No. So, I just knew it was her. I totally had forgotten about the prologue at this point. I was like, oh, fucking shit, Sarai. No, no, no. And just there was this long period of time where they started dealing with the shit on the ground and they didn't address it and I'm like hello hello and I'm like trying to direct their attention like they can fucking see me like oh my god and when they went and revealed her and everybody just kind of parted and he saw her on like the, the gate on the then I remember the prologue and I was like, no, 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 fuck, 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 oh. I've not been this gutted, like I said, since Sirius Black died. And I'm still waiting for him to come back, like, fix it, the fuck. It, it. I don't even know what the, I, I just, Laszlo, poor Laszlo, he did not deserve that. Like, he finally found her, and now, you know, he's one of them. He's got this way that he can just fucking get to her, and then he turns around, and she's gone. And I'm just like, no, poor Laszlo, why? So, it, it's just, 
So there's that um, with the plot, and I'm assuming that's just a Lainey Taylor thing. Like some people did say that there were some um, comparisons between this and the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series, but I haven't read that series yet. But as you see, one's missing. So get ready to start it. Super excited about it. Um, characters, uh, the sweet baby Jesus. This, uh, this review is not going to make any sense and I'm sorry. I just got so attached to Lazo like very easily and I, I just partially Lanny Taylor's writing and partially because you know he is very much like the fantasy reader just gets lost in all these worlds and he wants to know more about them and people are like well you know you need to meet girls and go ice skating and do all this other stuff and he's like no I'm good. As far as the god spawn, like, can we just talk about Minya for a little bit, okay? That little heifer should have been red, not blue. God spawn, my left tit, that little bitch is Rosemary's baby, I don't care what you say. For a good 60% of the book, I was like, somebody just toss her ass over the rail already! Shit! Like, why are we suffering this kid to live? Just fucking kill her. Just, she looks like a kid, but she's not. She's in her 20s. It's old enough. Just fucking kill her. Like, she's not going to get any better. Just kill her. Whatever. But other than that, like, Sarai, I'm kind of glad she ended up being the main god spawn that we kind of dealt with because she was my favorite. Just what she had to go through in that torture and just inserting herself in everybody else's dreams and weep and just having to kind of deal with that dichotomy of feeling angry at the way you know they think and feel about them and what they did to them and to their parents and at the same time understanding you know where they're coming from because of what their individual parents have done to these people and having a very hard time just kind of like coalescing is that the word I want? whatever just just gelling those two sides together the entire time even though many is like fucking fine aerophane and kill him and she just like no no it's just just watching that struggle is very relatable to me for a lot of other reasons i don't know i'm a reader like that though like and if it relates a little bit to me like i apply it to my own shit that's just me but just watching that it was heartbreaking and then watching you know that none of them really kind of ever expected to live that long either was heartbreaking and then when she got to meet Laszlo and I'm like uh, finally these two just like tortured people both of them deserve so much better like they're perfect for each other it was really beautiful to watch them like interact in his dreams and fall in love and have their first kiss and all this other stuff it was so very cute um, as far as the rest of the characters, damn near every single character in this book, every main character in this book is got some level of moral ambiguity going on. Laszlo is the only person whose moral compass points due north all of the time. Everybody else is just debating either they were tricked into doing something or they did something based on decision they made at the time or because they're feeling vengeful or whatever but it's not neatly or clearly right and wrong it turns into like all about survival get them before they get me or you know revenge you know it's okay because they did this to us first and there's, there's just always kind of that duology like the, of having those two sides and just fighting to be able to tell what's it's just simple right is right and wrong is wrong no matter what or are there excuses like is it this you know wrong but is it right when this has been done to you first or is it okay to do this if it's for your own survival like that kind of a thing. Lazo is the only person who's like no that's wrong no matter what and so that's why especially with the ending it frustrated me because when Sarai ugh, when Minya brought Sarai back and then took her over and basically used her as a pawn and so now she's got Laszlo who is supposedly at this point it's 
pretty sure he's gonna be the most powerful out of all of them at this point. Now she's basically manipulating him so that she won't do something to Soraya so that she will release Soraya and just not take her over and make her Minya's minion. <laughs> and I'm interested to see how that's going to turn out because like I said at this point, Laszlo is the only person whose moral compass has not wavered. And I'm wondering now is this going to be his point where okay I'll do some shitty things if it means you know you're not screwing with my woman's spirit. So, and I don't know if I'm going to like that or not. I kind of like the fact, this, one of the things like I like about Superman so much is that even like Batman loses his temper and whoops some ass sometimes, but Superman is like, no, that's not what heroes do. I'm not going to do it, except for the man of steel when he broke homeboy's neck. And I was like, fuck yeah. But I digress. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to be able, I don't know if I'm going to like that or not. If he does head down that path where he knows it's not right, but it's justified that he's trying to save Sarai from Minya or in the bigger picture they're trying to get rid of Minya or whatever they're going to do. And it just left off right there in this book, like I keep saying, it just wrecked me. It was just overall enjoyability of the book. Now you know me, I will love a book and it can have problems and I will still rate it a 5 out of 5 because I basically like it's it's a knee-jerk reaction for me to rate things based on how much I enjoyed them and this book was fabulous and amazing and if you have audible or you gonna try audible for free start with this book because Steve West who is a narrator was fucking amazing like his voice as Laszlo I mean he narrated everything but just it oh god I love it I love it I love it so much so hopefully uh, this spliced into a little bit of a better review than me gushing and shite. But yeah, that is Strange the Dreamer. Please, please check it out. I am going to go check out the rest of her books and hopefully they are just as awesome as this one. Um, if they are, I am pretty much from this point out Lainey Taylor trash. I just, pretty much. Yeah. It's going to be one of those authors like Sherilyn Kenyon or... Uh, Julie Garwood that every time I just see anything with her name on it I'm like yank bye what's this about I don't know bye that that's what's th that's what's gonna happen with Lenny Taylor I feel it I now have to go search for everything she's ever written including like college papers because I, I, I I'm ruined I'm ruined so give this video a thumbs up if you like it and don't forget to subscribe that is all I have for you today guys let me know what you thought about the book and her other books if you read them down in the comments and I will see you there thanks for watching bye